Well, hi there. I just could not take being cooped up inside anymore, um, so we decided to take a long September weekend up to Michigan to hang out and look for Petoskey stones in Lake Michigan. Uh, I'm not going to take the camera in the water with me, but we're gonna look for Petoskey stones and I'll tell you what they are too once I find some, hopefully. Fingers crossed. So right here on this line where the waves pull back seems to be sort of where the heavier bits of rock get accumulated, whereas like sand moves up and down the shore quite a bit. So I think in this line is probably where I'm going to be able to find these rocks that I'm looking for, but I can't do that with the camera in my hand, so I'm going to put you down for a second. It's a beautiful, beautiful lake though. Okay, so I spent a little time in the water and we found some, uh, so I want to show you what these look like, but it's kind of weird because they don't look like anything when they're dry, so I'm kind of going to have to like show you each one and then get it wet and put it back in front of the camera so that you can actually see the design or the fossil, these are fossils, that's in the Petoskey stone. So I'm going to show them to you dry um, and then I'll get them wet and that way you can sort of see the search image or what it is you would be looking for if you were going to hunt for Petoskey stones. Uh, so here's my collection so far. Uh, this one is a really, oops, <laughs> this one is a really good one. Um, you can't necessarily see a whole lot on it dry like this. And if I get it wet on my sleeve, look at that cool design. Isn't that neat? Okay, um, and then this was also a good one. So you can sort of see that there's like a lighter area here on the edge, but if I get it wet, that lighter area really stands out and you can see the fossil shape. Okay, so I told you these are fossils, but what exactly are they and why did I come here to find them? Well, Petoskey, Michigan is known for Petoskey stones, which are a special kind of fossil that you can find along the beaches here in Petoskey, Michigan, and all up and down this part of the Lake Michigan coast. Um, so we're on the eastern side of Lake Michigan, up in the north near Traverse Bay, and this whole area is known for these Petoskey stones. They are a kind of fossilized coral. So this part of the world, this continent, or this landmass, used to be underwater and closer to the equator and huge coral reefs grew in that area and the coral reefs fossilized or became replaced with minerals over time and then became part of the bedrock and then all of the tectonic plates and land masses shifted around over millions of years and now we are here in Michigan in the northern hemisphere but when the glaciers moved through they broke up a lot of the bedrock and turned up the soil and everything so now you can actually find Petoskey stones in the beach and in the water in the very near shoreline in the lake um, and these are really cool because when I showed you the design you could see it with this sort of like multi-sided shape um, so that is a single coral polyp remember corals are clonal animals so each individual polyp is its own animal but they are all clones of one another and they live in these large colonies so each of those individual relatively circular shapes on the stone is a single coral polyp and the dark center is its mouth area or the mouth opening and then the lighter lines surrounding it are the fossil remains of where the oral arms used to be. So you can think of a coral polyp as being a very small sea anemone so it's got that central mouth and then all of the little like tendrils or oral arms that sweep food into its mouth. So that is what you're looking for when you find a Petoskey stone and I already have a few small ones but I think we're gonna keep hanging out in the water. It's a little cold, but it's actually a really nice day, and I'm gonna keep looking for fossils. So we very quickly realized that since the design is not really visible when the rocks are dry, it doesn't make a lot of sense to look for them up there on the land, also because there aren't as many rocks up there. There's more rocks down here in the water. Um, so basically we're doing this sort of like panning for gold type strategy, where you pick up a handful of rocks and sand, and sort of let the water wash the sand away for you. And then you can just look at the handful of rocks and flip all of them over, because sometimes the fossil is only visible on one side. Um, but it looks like, did you find one there? Nice, look at that. Yeah, so you have to sort of like, just get ankles or maybe knee deep in the water and start picking up handfuls of rocks 
wash the sand away and uh, see what you find. Hey, I'm back inside where there's no more wind, so you can actually maybe hear and understand what I'm saying now. Sorry about how windy it was on the beach. Uh, but these are the Petoskey stones that we found while we were out on the beach exploring. Uh, so I wanted to just sort of clarify or reiterate what I was talking about earlier on the beach because it was windy and I was out of breath and excited about the fossils, um, but Petoskey stones are actually pieces of fossilized coral from the bedrock, and the coral species was Hexagonaria percarinata. Um, so this is an ancient species of coral that built huge reefs close to the equator, um, but then the land mass has shifted, and so now you can find these fossils in the northern hemisphere. Now, most of them look pretty much just like normal rocks uh, when they're dry like this, but if I pour water on them, There we go. Now you can see that suddenly a lot of them have cool looking markings on them. Um, this one is probably still my favorite, uh, but a lot of these are really nice. Um, and you can see that some of them only have a bit of fossil on like a corner. Um, so sometimes you're not gonna get a full fossil. That's the other reason this one is cool is because it's um, the entire rock is a piece of fossil, but um, let me see if I can refocus the camera here. Uh, as I was trying to explain in the video on the beach, um, these, whoops, <laughs> oh gosh, oh gosh, come on camera, you can do it. There we go. Um, so these shapes are each an individual coral polyp. So uh, the dark center is where the mouth was, and then the um, white sort of outer line here is the edge of where the oral arms of this coral polyp um, met or touched or interacted with the oral arms of the next coral polyp over. So you can see one, two, three, four, five, like six uh, coral polyps on the surface of this stone. Um, so they just would have been a huge mat um, to make the coral reef. So these Trying to bring the focus back, there we go. These are our Petoskey stones. So we've got a whole bunch of different ones, some with quite a few polyps on them, some with maybe only one or two. Um, but this was just so exciting. I'd never like gone hunting for fossils and found fossils before. This is really cool and I very much enjoyed it. Uh, so I would recommend that you do it if you get the chance. That being said though, I do want to remind you that Petoskey stones are a very particular kind of fossil. They're incredibly common. You can find them all over. A lot of them are very small like that. Um, so it means that they are okay for people to collect in certain amounts. You, I think the rule is you can't collect over like 25 pounds or something like that, which is a lot of raw. I don't think you need that many Petoskey stones in your personal collection. Um, but the reason I'm bringing this up is because lots of fossils are really, really, really important to science. And if you find a fossilized bone or shell or, you know, even um, a human artifact, so not a fossil, but something like um, an arrowhead or a piece of pottery, it's important to leave those things where they are um, and take GPS coordinates if you're able to on your phone and report that to to your local natural history museum or something like that um, because those fossils are heritage for all of us and they don't belong in one person's private collection. So make sure you understand the rules about collecting certain kinds of fossils in the area where you are and what kind of fossils they are before you go out on a collecting expedition. So Petoskey stones are okay for people to just collect individually like this, um, but other kinds of fossils are not. So please make sure that you are aware of all of those rules before you go and try to do something like like this because you don't want to take something that you shouldn't and make it so that no one else is able to see or learn from that particular artifact. But like I said, the water in Lake Michigan was cold but crisp and nice and we had a wonderful day looking for Petoskey stones. So if you ever find yourself in Northern Michigan on the coast of the lake, I really recommend that you go and try your hand at looking for Petoskey stones because they're fascinating to look at and it was really fun to just spend the afternoon in the water. If you liked this video, don't forget to like it. If you didn't like this video, please 
please share it with someone who would. And if you'd like to support The Roving Naturalist, remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon, then go check out my Patreon page. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.